Let's look at how larger samples make your confidence intervals better. And by better, I mean it makes the interval itself smaller. And we're going to look at that by looking at the proportions interval that we found earlier. We found a 95% confidence interval, and it was a pretty big range, 0.45 to 0.75. That's a 30% gap in the middle there. That's generally not going to be acceptable data to report. We had sampled 40 people. Let's imagine, let's do this over here, and let's imagine that we sampled 160 people. So we sampled more people. And out of that 160, uh, let's say that we got 96 of them who said the puppy was cuter than the kitty. So the exact same ratio as what we had before. About 60% of our sample said the puppy was cuter than the kitty. If we go ahead and generate our samples, it's going to do the same thing before, where it repicks from that copy and pasted sample uh, to form our new sample. And we generate, we generate, generate 100, generate 1,000, and you see the same basic familiar pattern that we saw before. Here's what's interesting, though. You click the two tail button to see where our middle 95% is, and whoa, those numbers are different. Back here, we were 0.45 to 0.75. Here, we're 0.52 to 0.67. In fact, our interval actually got half the size going from here to here. When we interviewed 40 people, our, inter our interval was quite large. When we interviewed 160, our interval got a little bit smaller. Still not great, though. Well, let's get real extreme with this. Instead of interviewing 40 or 106, let's interview 4,000 people. And let's imagine that 2,400 of them thought the puppy was cuter. Same proportion as we were looking at before. Our best guess from our sample is still 60%. Generate a sample, generate a sample, and we get things kind of all over the place. Cut to the chase, do a few thousand of these. And let's look where our middle 95% happens to fall. Don't generate too many thousands with big numbers like that or your computer will crash. But our middle 95% is between 0.585 and 0.615. That margin of error went down to less than 1.5% either direction. Before we had 15% either direction with the smaller sample. And when we got 100 times the size, only 1.5%. So what's going on here? Why is the interval getting smaller when we interview more people? Well, if you give it a little bit of thought, it makes sense that the more people you talk to, the more you should be able to trust your sample. right? If you have a really small sample, well, anything could happen. But if you have a huge sample, if you have 4,000 people in your sample, well, that seems pretty trustworthy. It's, it's pretty unlikely that you're not going to get a good representation from that many people. And so the big idea here is whenever you talk to more people, and you're doing it, of course, in a valid way, if it's not an SRS, if it's a convenient sample or voluntary sample, you could have a million people and it would be totally worthless. But if you do a true SRS or something equivalent, the more people you talk to, the smaller that interval is going to get. And the interesting pattern here, right, we said 15% uh, either way down to 1.5% either way. It dropped by a tenth when we multiplied our sample size by 100. And here, we cut the interval in half when we multiplied the sample by 4. The pattern, in fact, is that the interval is shrinking at 1 over the square root of the sample size. So to put that in clearer words, if the sample is 4 times bigger, the interval is 1 half the size. You take the square root of 4 and throw it on the bottom. If the sample is 100 times bigger, well, square root of 100 is 10, the interval is one-tenth the size, and that's what we saw. The more people you ask, the bigger your sample gets, the smaller your interval will get. And you can actually calculate roughly how much that's going to actually happen.